Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. I'd like the Supreme Court, so the mayor, the, the, the Chief Justice, so the, so the mayor, uh, one of the Supreme Court justices, she told him just knock it in. That's right. Sitting up there pretending that now racism don't exist. And, and as Uncle um, Clarence Thomas. Oh, y'all, brother. Uh, oh, brother. Uh, uh, you said that, I did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show. Kind of sad when the, the host of the New Nation of Islam radio show is the one saying to, his, to the congressman, you said it, I didn't, um, but Congressman Bernie Thompson of uh, Mississippi, Democrat, of course, uh, called uh, uh, Clarence Thomas and Uncle Tom. Uh, joining us now to talk about that and oh so much more is the one and only David Horowitz, founder and president of the David Horowitz Foundation, uh, uh, David Horowitz Freedom Center, I should say, and uh, editor of Front Page Magazine, and of course the author of the Black Book of the American Left. And David, is, uh, is that not disgusting? Well, look, it's been going on now for 30, 40 years. Um, the effort by Democrats to uh, declare any uh, dissent from their party line uh, as indecent, as racist, as sexist, as Islamophobic, it's, it's an attempt to suppress the speech of those who oppose them. Uh, my uh, front page magazine, uh, which is my kind of flagship publication, uh, the motto of it is, uh, inside every liberal is a totalitarian screaming to get out. <laughs> and the, and uh, this is obviously a totalitarian move. Clarence Thomas has got to be delegitimized because he's a conservative. And, of course, blacks and uh, uh, decent people can't be conservative. That, that's the Democratic Party line. It's a totalitarian line. Um, and their efforts to stamp out the opposition are, are quite clear, with uh, Obama uh, being the force behind the IRS uh, efforts, the taxing power of the government to shut down um, their opponents. This is a frightening moment in American history. And I, I, uh, you know, I hope people are aware of that. The, this uh, series of books I've written called The Black Book of the American Left, there are two volumes out now, um, is a, a portrait of what are falsely called liberals and progressives. These people are not liberal and they're not progressive. They're radicals and they're what I call neo-communists, and that's because the new left, which was a neo-communist left, there was never a new left, uh, marched into the Democratic Party 30, 40 years ago with the McGovern campaign and has taken over the party. And but Barack Obama is one of them. Um, the President of the United States is an anti-American radical who wants to fundamentally transform the United States, in his own words, who has taken us down. I mean, we're, it's an embarrassment. Uh, America was once a great power. Now it's a laughing stock internationally. Uh, where we, we can't stand up to any dictator, any thug, any aggressor, uh, and where we are embracing uh, Nazis in the Middle East. The, the Muslim Brotherhood, which Obama has embraced, is a Nazi organization, and so is the a, is a Palestinian leadership. Well, that's and, only because, of course, David, the Israelis are going to become an apartheid state, don't you know? Yeah, well, you know, it, that, that stupid, well, it was a malicious carry remark, playing into the hands of these exterminationist Nazis. I mean, the, 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 the Palestinian leadership has said in so many words, they're going to push the Jews into the sea. There can be no Jews in a liberated Palestine, and a liberated Palestine for them is from the river to the sea. That wipes out Israel. And Kerry is supporting them, uh, whatever he's saying. He makes all these lip service uh, to American Jews, but the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, when you accuse Israel of being an apartheid state or likely to become one, why? It's a multi-ethnic uh, state. Uh, the Palestinians, the, uh, not, uh, the uh, Arabs who live in Israel, have more rights 
and privileges than the Arabs in any Arab state. Well, David, it's like, it's like we, we had the United States. Yeah. If, if, if we don't have a, a 30 state solution where we have a black state and an Hispanic state and so forth, that we're going to be an apartheid state. It's, it's, it's nonsensical. Right. There's only one reason we need a two state solution, and that's because of the Palestinians and, and how the rest of the Arab world treats, uh, treats you. But, you know, Caroline Glick, of course, who uh, does such fine work for, for your organization as well, was on, and she said, uh, with regard to that, that uh, Kerry is implying and saying that Jews are inherently evil, that they won't be able to stop themselves from becoming an apartheid state. That's exactly right. He's an anti-Semite. He's an American traitor. That's how he started out, if you'll remember. He, uh, throwing away his medals during the Vietnam War. Oh, sure. War. I remember Falsely. that. And the, uh, trashing the Vietnam troops, trashing the, the troops in Iraq when he said, if you don't do well in school, you'll wind up in Iraq. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, you know, this intolerance of the left has moved to a, a new realm. We had uh, Carlo DeMeo, De who's running for uh, Congress in, uh, in, in California, I think the 58th CD, San Diego. He's on the city council. He's an openly gay Republican, one of three in the country that are running. And he d described how he is taking uh, heat and fire from the left, from so-called progressives, how they're photoshopping f pictures of him with his head on disgusting, vulgar images um, because he's a Republican. So now it appears they've extended it. We knew well, that if you were a black and conservative, you're not really black. If you were Hispanic, you're not really Hispanic. If you were a woman, you're not really a woman. But now, if you're a gay Republican, I guess you're not really gay yeah, this or is whatever. <laughs> this is the totalitarian mindset. It's what the left did to Ayan Hirsi Ali at Brandeis. Even though she's black, even though she's suffered terribly, uh, under Muslim oppression in, in Somalia, and after when she uh, was, she had to flee Holland because of the death threats against her. The left is still supporting the criminals, and that is the look. I, Republicans, conservatives, have to stop calling these people liberals. That's camouflage for them. I, mean, I watched Brent, Brent Bozell on, on the, the other night. I don't want to single out Brent. He does very good work. But when you call these people liberals, you are serving their evil ends. The, you could call them leftists. Like I say, the proper term would be neo-communists or you know, totalitarians. They want to shut down free speech. They, you know, they, they, they want to have this commission on the Internet to decide what's acceptable speech and what isn't. There's nothing more anti-American than that. And yet, conservatives and Republicans call such people liberals, who, people who want to destroy the Constitution, and every day show they do by their behavior. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you about something that that's going on in uh, uh, Fort Collins High School in uh, in Colorado. Uh, the principal there is defending his decision to let uh, students from a cultural club to recite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic. So if they're saying under God, I guess they're saying uh, while they're doing that under Allah in a public school well, in the United States in, of America. Why, why, why not do it in Hebrew? Why do they pick Arabic? I mean, these disgusting regimes in the Middle East, all the Arab regimes are tyrannies uh, that oppress women, that oppress gays. Uh, so why all this homage from the left for disgusting regimes, for tyrannies, uh, and for, regime, for people that, that hate America and want to destroy it? Because inside every leftist is this totalitarian screaming to get out, and they hate America. They basically believe America is the problem. And I wrote this book, The Black Book of the American Left. It, it, it doc, it, you know, it's, it's, it's what I've written over 40 years, uh, engaging the left. But it also shows how deep this is, uh, deeply embedded in the Democratic Party and in the left, how committed they are to these anti-American agendas. And David, you came from that ilk. In Iraq. They betrayed America in Iraq. Um, and, and, and Obama, of course, just uh, turned Iraq over to Iran. Obama is a dangerous, dangerous, evil man, and people have to start saying this. Just because he's black, he doesn't get a free or shouldn't get a free ride, although I know in America today, uh, if you are black, you do get a free ride.
All right. Well, uh, I, 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 how do you feel about Donald Sterling and the Clippers real quick? we got less than a minute. Well, uh, that's a perfect example of how racism has been stamped out in America. Of course there are racists like Sterling. But uh, if you have a white racist, he's toast. He's over. If you have black racists like Farrakhan, uh, you know, that, or Sharpton, who's the chief presidential advisor on races, a bloody racist, he can get away with it. Free pass for blacks. Yeah. Hey, David, he David, I really appreciate you coming on. The Black Book of the American Left, uh, the writings of the great David Horowitz, and uh, the two volumes out so far. Uh, you do well to get, get the head start, get the volumes one and two and read them. Uh, and then when the other volumes come out, uh, you'll be ready for them. David, always great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Take appreciate care. It. David Horowitz uh, here on the uh, Steve Molesberg Show. Uh, you know what's next. If you look at the clock on the wall, the clock on the wall says 3 o'clock. little George Thorogood for you. Uh, it's uh, Give Me Five is coming up next right here on the Steve Molesberg Show.